This is the Sovel SV08, a large format Core XY 3D printer that we reviewed a little over a month ago. While it has some quirks, it's a fairly capable printer that handled a range of test prints that I threw at it. One big perk of the SV08 is that it was released as open source. So the entire assembly and all CAD files for the printer are publicly available via Sovel's GitHub. Thanks to this, we've already begun to see a large number of community upgrades for those that are interested in doing so. In addition to this, Sovel had a few upgrades listed at launch on their website that included a touchscreen for clipper screen and an enclosure for those wanting to print with materials like ABS. I've received some questions about these, so when Sovel offered to send them out, I agreed to take a look. Well, I got these installed a little over a week ago, and I've got some thoughts. In this video, we'll take a look at these official SV08 upgrades as we cover what goes into getting them installed and I share my thoughts based on my experience so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Jumping right in with the screen, this is listed as SV08 IPS 50 5 inch HDMI capacitive clipper screen on the product page and is currently priced at $99. Other than a few images on the listing, there really is little info on it or what's included. Looking at the image, it looks like a fairly nice screen with a clean housing. Well, the first thing that caught me off guard when I opened the box was with that housing. The entire case for this is 3D printed. Now, in Sobel's defense, it doesn't say anywhere on the product page that it's not 3D printed, and if you go to the third image and zoom in, you can see layer lines, but this feels like something that should be called out in the product listing. There's a blur applied to the first couple of images to soften the edges, and I thought the texture that you could see was part of the mold. The Sovel SV08 doesn't use any printed parts. Everything on it is either aluminum or injection molded. So at $99, I think it's reasonable to expect that an official upgrade from Sovel would be of similar quality. In the box with the screen is a USB-C cable and an HDMI cable. Since the ports are on the right side of the printer, there's not really a good way to route these nicely. I originally had them on the outside of the printer, but found that I could run them underneath through the opening that the original screen wires pass through, which cleans it up a bit. The last thing about the screen that is a real head scratcher is mounting. On the back of the printed case are two hooks that look identical to the hooks used to mount the stock screen. There's also a built-in kickstand, which I figured was there for anyone wanting to keep the screen on the shelf or beside the printer. Well, when I went to install the touchscreen where the old screen used to be, I discovered that the hooks were too close together and there's no way to mount it. I was pretty confused at first and thought that maybe there had been a revision to the bottom casing that brought those hooks or those connection points closer together, but that was cleared up when I went over to printables on Sovel's page and found some additional info. Sovel released a printable bracket for the screen, and the description states that they did not intend for the touchscreen to be mounted onto the printer. According to the description, it was only based on feedback that they decided to make it mountable. I have no idea why they thought people wouldn't want to mount the screen onto their printer, but if you do want to mount the screen, it requires you printing out a bracket that's basically an adapter that goes from the wider hooks to the smaller hooks that come on the printed case. I ended up finding a slightly revised version from AWSW that closes the gap at the top to add a bit of rigidity that I printed out. It still has more flex than I would like, but printed in ABS, it's slot right into the printer and has held the screen in place without issues. During this adventure, I stumbled across the Sovel SV08 5-inch Big Tree Tech Display Mod from Nadir. The design of this housing looks much nicer and more rigid than the official Sovel one. On top of that, the 5-inch HDMI screen goes for around $50, so it's about half the price. It looks like there's a notched version of this display that will work with the enclosure kit, but I do see mention of a revision to the Big Tree Tech 5-inch screen, and it doesn't look like the notched version has been released for it. Regardless, for half the cost, I highly recommend looking into this upgrade or another similar one. I'll have this printable page along with a link to the Big Tree Tech 5-inch screen in the description. Next, we have the enclosure kit. Much like the screen, there really isn't a lot of info on this. The listing says it's metal and tempered glass, and there's a few pictures on the product page, but that's it. Unlike the screen, I had a little bit of insight into this enclosure. 
My buddy Tor, who picked up the SPO8 and Enclosure, mentioned in a stream that he was having a frustrating time with it because the printed parts they ship with are made of PLA. Prior to that, I had no idea that the Enclosure included printed parts because there's no mention, as far as I can see of it, anywhere. Once I had everything out of the box, the first thing I did was look at the printed parts. The doors have printed handles and magnet holders, and the cable chain attachment pieces are also printed. The third page of the manual has a link for PLA prints, which seems to be a bad URL, but I was able to find an alternative in the SV08 wiki that contained all of the STLs. While you can probably get away with using PLA for the external handles and magnet holders, there is no way I'd recommend using PLA for the internal cable chain holders. Anyone that's getting the enclosure very likely is wanting to print with at least some higher temp materials, and I can see that PLA sagging very quickly if you don't swap those out. It feels like a pretty big oversight that they didn't at least go with PETG. I ended up reprinting all the parts for the enclosure out of ASA. Swapping out the door parts was fairly simple, as it just uses self-tapping screws, but I did have to cut the magnets out of the included parts and glue them into the ones I printed. Since I went with ABS, I scaled the parts up by 100.5% in X and Y when I sliced them, and that seemed to work out well. Assembly for most of the enclosure was pretty straightforward. For a lot of it, you're just using the same M3 by 8 socket head screws to secure the panels to the threaded holes on the frame. One of the bigger issues I ran into was with the cable chains. When I ran the wire harness through the cable chains, there was hardly enough slack for me to be able to get it to the AB motors. It adds a bit of distance, which ate up all of the existing slack. I even tried to adjust the cables underneath the printer, but once homed, I really don't like how close it is to being yanked out. I only have my printer, so I don't know if there's different cable lengths and different harnesses on other SVO8s out there, but in my case, at least for the back right motor, I'm going to have to go back in there and extend that cable just to prevent any accidental damage or it unplugging during a print. The sort of icing on the cake for this whole thing was when I went to install the glass panels on the top of the enclosure. I couldn't get the back one on without first removing the spool holder, and I don't love that once I put the spool holder back on and tightened it down, it's putting a lot of pressure on this tempered glass. Then when I went to put the larger front panel on, I hit the top of the tool head. Even when pushing down the reverse Bowden tube, you can't get the glass on when the printer is raised all the way up. Whether this is a big deal or not really depends on how tall you print, as you are going to be losing some of the Z height. I don't see myself ever really needing to print to the max 345 millimeters in Z, but this is something that should at least be mentioned in the product listing. It looks like Sovel uploaded a riser that you can print out for the times you may need to use the full height, but it's a large print, and because of its openings, it would not be good for you to have on when using any warp prone materials. While the end result is a fully enclosed printer running clipper screen, I can't help but feel like these upgrades are just half baked. Yes, the SV08 had a few things that I felt could be improved upon, but I was largely happy with the performance I was getting out of the box. Going from that to this is confusing, and I can see it being a pretty frustrating experience. I would like for Sobel to revise the screen upgrade for this, so that way it's injection molded and matches the rest of the printer and can be mounted nicely on the front of this machine, as well as make some obvious tweaks to the enclosure upgrade. At the very least, these details need to be added to the product page so that way a customer can make a more informed decision on what they may end up buying. I know I mentioned him earlier in the video, but if you're looking for mods for the SV08, I highly recommend checking out Nadir's work. From Bamboo Lab hot end support to Clicky Probe and a top hat, there is a ton of awesome looking mods on his printables page. And that has been the SV08 official touchscreen and enclosure upgrade. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you maybe had. If you do have any additional ones, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. And as always, if I don't know the answer to your questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to Sovel to try to get those answers for you. I really hope Sovel takes some of this feedback into consideration. I had high hopes for these upgrades and it just fell short. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a new video just about every week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dan from ModBot. 
I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.